we're going to go ahead and get started. The psalmist declares, we agree, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It indeed is an honor and a privilege to welcome you to the Antioch United American Free Baptist Church, Kinston, North Carolina, uh, on this third Sunday in the month of June. I'd like to say to all of our fathers, uh, Happy Father's Day. Uh, those who have uh, children, uh, those who are uncles, uh, big brothers, or, or whatever, we also wish you a Happy Father's Day as well. Um, and so today we are just so excited and grateful and thankful to God for being able to, to be with you on today as we open up the Word of God, as we study to show ourselves approved unto God, a work that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. Uh, today's lesson will be coming from the book of Proverbs, chapter number 8. Uh, book of Proverbs, chapter number 8, uh, beginning with verse 8. And today we're going to talk about wisdom's rewards. Uh, so once again, Proverbs chapter number 8, uh, beginning with verse number 8. And so as you are turning to that in your Bible, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we are just so grateful and thankful to you for this another day and another opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy, for your loving kindness, and for just allowing us another opportunity to join together in this virtual space as we study to show ourselves approved unto you, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, God, we ask that you uh, continue to be with us in our time of study. We ask that you would guide our minds, guide our hearts, guide our will, that we might not only be hearers of your word, but master, help us to be doers of your word as well. And for whatever is said, for whatever is done, we shall give your name the glory, honor, and praise, in Jesus, let me pray. Amen. So today we're going to talk about wisdom's rewards. Uh, wisdom's rewards. Uh, Proverbs chapter uh, number 8, uh, verses 8 through 14. Uh, and then we'll skip down to verse number uh, 17. Uh, for those who have a Sunday school book, uh, it is uh, lesson number 3. We are in the last unit of this Sunday school year. Uh, we're in the last unit of the Sunday school year. Uh, so if you have a book, it is uh, uh, lesson number three, uh, Wisdom's Rewards. And so as we begin to talk about our lesson for today, I would like for us to think about the things that we have or that we hold valuable uh, in our lives. You know, uh, as human beings, uh, we have certain things that we consider to be valuable. Uh, for many people, it might be a, a, a possession such as a, a piece of property like a house or an automobile. Uh, it could be jewelry. But all of these are things that we give value to. And in our society, we have a very good, uh, a, a very good way of being able to determine how much something is worth. And so as we are beginning to think about those things that we consider to be valuable, today's lesson uh, helps us to understand that although the world holds some things to be valuable, but we can never forget the value of wisdom and applied wisdom in our lives. And so, you know, throughout our previous lessons, we have talked about the differences between knowledge and wisdom. And we said that, you know, hey, uh, it is possible to have book sense, but not common sense. Uh, so today I want to add to that. And I want to say that, hey, it is possible to have houses, land, automobiles. It is possible to have uh, uh, money in the bank, but then we still are missing a very key ingredient to our lives. And so to that point, our lesson today wants us to understand uh, what are the benefits, what are the rewards, what is it that makes 
wisdom so valuable in our lives. And so let's start uh, uh, with, with the word of God. Uh, Proverbs chapter number eight, uh, verses uh, eight through 11. Proverbs chapter eight, verses uh, eight through 11. From the New International Version of the Bible, you will find these words. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning of all of them are right. They are upright to those who have found knowledge. Choose my instruction instead of silver. Knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare with her. And so, if you remember from lesson number one, uh, whenever we look at wisdom and the way that Solomon introduces or presents wisdom to us, he presents wisdom to us not as an object, but Solomon presents wisdom in the form of a person. And so when, we, when he talks about wisdom, he, he uses, he personifies, if you will, um, uh, wisdom and gives, uh, first of all, gives wisdom a gender, uh, gives wisdom a, a, a nature, uh, gives wisdom an entire personality. And so whenever you look at uh, this particular section of, of, of scripture, uh, you see uh, 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 quite evident that this is wisdom that is speaking. Um, I am a child of the 80s and the 90s, and I remember, uh, uh, I believe it was like the various cartoons, but the one I remember the most is the, the Flintstones. And, you know, they had like the, the good person and the, and the bad person. Uh, I believe in many commercials during that time, you know, especially like those, those cake commercials, you know, all of those, you know, you know, you know, uh, the, the, the good person and then the bad person, you know, and, and the bad person, like, oh, enjoy this piece of cake. And the good person is saying, no, I'll stay away from, you know, trying to get you to give in to certain things. And so whenever I think of wisdom, I think of, you know, that analogy that in life we have many voices that are speaking to us. We have many voices that are trying to claim our attention. And so on one end, you have the voice of wisdom. And then on the other end, you have the voice of foolishness. You have the voice of folly. And then you have the voice of the simple or that are on the other side. And, and wisdom is trying to speak to us. Wisdom is trying to get our attention. Wisdom is trying to convince us of her benefits. And so let's ask a very critical question. So if wisdom is so important and if wisdom, if, if, if it is so obvious, uh, you know, uh, why it is that we need to uh, apply wisdom into our lives, why don't we? Why don't we? Our lesson will deal with this, but I'll give you kind of a sneak peek because wisdom, when wisdom speaks to us, wisdom will always speak the truth. Wisdom will always give us the right way, but wisdom will not always give us the easy way. Wisdom will not always give us the fast way. Uh, in our society, we love the fast lane. You know, uh, you know, as it was said, you know, when I, when I, when I was growing up, um, you know, fast money, fast living, and fast women. Uh, it was what they used to say. We like the fast lane. You know, uh, microwave ovens, you know, that was when I was growing up. But now, you know, uh, even by virtue of, you know, social media, we want to be able to communicate with the world uh, at the tip of our fingers. But wisdom will not always give us the fast answer. It will not always give us the popular answer, but it will always give us the right answer. It will always lead us away from the pitfalls that are set for us in our lives, and wisdom will always point us towards God. And so what is it that wisdom is saying? 
So number one, wisdom is saying that uh, all of my words are just and none of them are crooked or perverse. So in other words, when wisdom speaks, as wisdom is speaking, wisdom will always speak to us the things that are right and pleasing in the sight of God. But you know, hey, let's be honest. Because, you know, sometimes we don't want to hear that. We, we don't want to hear, you know, what we are supposed to do. We want to hear what we want to hear. We want to hear, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's your thing and do what you want to do. We don't want to hear, stop. Take your time. Think about this thing. Wisdom, as wisdom speaks, wisdom will speak to us the truth. And so, as, as wisdom speaks, compares herself to speaking what is just. She compares herself to the other voice. You know, those other voices on this side. And, 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 and she says that those voices are forward and perverse. Uh, whenever you look at the New International Version of the Bible, it uses the words crooked or perverse. And so whenever you look at that word uh, forward, uh, F-R-O, uh, w A R D. Uh, forward means complicated, complex, or difficult. And so, if you put that together with what the NIV version is saying, is that that other voice, the other voice that is in contradiction to wisdom, is and it speaks crookedness. It speaks a way, amen, that seems right to man, but the end leads to destruction. And the other thing that voice speaks is it is perverse. It is distorted. It leads to a incorrect or a wrong conclusion. Let me ask you this question. Had you ever, and I've been guilty of this myself, had you ever jumped to a conclusion based on half of the story? Adam and Eve did. They had half of the story. And the thing about it is, the half that they had wasn't even right. But they jumped to a conclusion which led them to commit the first sin. In our lives, this other voice is a voice that is distorted. This other voice is like, you know, whenever you're, if, if, if you drive a car, if you ever look in the, not the left, but it's usually the right mirror, the, the right side view mirror, it will say something to the effect that objects will appear closer than what they actually are. Uh, and then depending on the type of vehicle that you drive, you know, uh, you can have those side view mirrors, but then you always have to check that blind spot. And so what wisdom is saying, hey, you know, this other voice, my competition, the other voices that are trying to speak to you, uh, those voices are uh, perverted. Those other voices are not lined up with the will of God. And so therefore, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. And so then, how is it? How can we, in the midst of all of these voices that we hear speaking to us, how can we properly discern the voice of God or the voice of wisdom versus the voice of, of, of foolishness, the voice of folly, uh, and the voice of the simple? Okay, as we look at it, God's ways, in verse number nine, are plain to him that understand and right to them that find knowledge. And so whenever we look at the voice of, of, of wisdom, if we would seek wisdom, wisdom will help us to discern uh, what is right versus what is wrong. Remember, whenever you look at knowledge, knowledge helps us to understand what is true versus what is false. But it is wisdom that helps us to understand what is right 
versus what is wrong. Because everything that is true is not right. Everything that is legal is not right. Everything that is popular is not right. Everything that feels good is not right. And so, you know, and many times, uh, you know, if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes we have to live through some mistakes. We make some mistakes in our lives because we did not listen to the voice of wisdom. And then there's some things we got to figure out on our own. But what wisdom says is, hey, life is, an experience is an awesome teacher. Don't get me wrong. Wisdom is an awesome teacher, but you shouldn't have to make the same mistakes of every generation that came before you. Wisdom says that, hey, this is the way to go. You don't have to repeat the same thing that your mama did, that your daddy did. Just because they did it doesn't mean that you have to do it yourself. Wisdom says, hey, you know, choose a better way. But many times, we want to listen to that other voice. We want to listen, you know, to the easy way. We want to listen, you know, to that way that seems right. And then at the end of the day, then we find ourselves saying, wow, I wish I would have listened to mama. I wish I would have listened to daddy. I wish I would have listened to, you know, my grandparents or whatever, because there's some things that I went through that I didn't have to go through. And the thing about it is, is that once we learn, once we learn from the things that we've gone through, because I, I don't say mistakes, right? Uh, because everything that happens, it happens for a reason. And everything that happens, it happens for just for a season. And so, you know, the things that we go through, uh, it, it does, it teaches us. And then as we learn the lesson from our past, then it is our job to help somebody else. And so here's wisdom. Wisdom speaks to us. And so get this. The chief reasons individuals don't receive and apply wisdom to their lives is, number one, they don't desire it, and two, they refuse to yield to its influence. Uh, remember last week in our lesson, I, 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 I clearly stated that when it comes to wisdom, you got to want it. You got to want it. Uh, because, you know, hey, let, you know, it, 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 because if you don't want it, there's nothing that anybody can do to make you receive it. Unfortunately, there are some people that, you know, they, they are, they are, they want to stay in a state of foolishness. Remember from two weeks ago, you know, I used that song, you know, everybody plays the fool sometimes, but just because you play a fool doesn't mean that you have to stay a fool. You know, just because, you know, you have done some things in your past doesn't mean that you have to keep on doing it. When it comes to wisdom, you got to want it. You, you, you got to want it. There has to be a desire uh, to, hey, you know, God, I want to live my life on a higher standard. Lord, I want to live my life uh, that is pleasing to you. And, and sometimes, get this, sometimes that desire is birthed out of a season of I've done it, I failed, I did what I did, I failed, and now I'm looking for a way out. And if that's how you get to that point of desire, absolutely no problem with that. I think we all have been there at some point in time in our lives, where we look at our lives, we look at the course of our lives, we look at where we are in our lives, and we start saying, God, there's got to be something more to life than this. There's got to be something better than this. There's got to be a better way. And that's why, you know, even as I am, you know, in the church pastoring, uh, I always, you know, challenge the membership 
is that there will be people that will have that. They will get to that point in their lives where they are looking for a change. There will be a point in time, you know, when they're looking for a way out. They're looking to live their life to a higher standard. And at some point, they are going to turn to the church. But when they turn to the church, what will they see? Will they see us living our lives according to godly wisdom? Or will they find us doing some of the same stuff that everybody else is doing? Will they find us, you know, uh, 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 sharing and imparting wisdom to one another? Or will they find us doing some of the childish things that are being done out in the world? Uh, now, don't get me wrong, you know, because when it comes to living your life to a better standard, uh, you know, it has more to do with just the way. It, living your life to a higher standard has more to do with then number one, what you do in your bedroom, and then number two, what type of substances or chemicals that you are hooked or addicted to. No, living your life to a higher standard says that I want to avoid all of the pitfalls that are placed in my life. And if we as the children of God are childish in our behavior, if we are nitpicking with one another, if we are, you know, if we are behaving like children, then what do we expect people to come in and see, you know, within our within our churches? Um, you know, one of the expectations, um, you know, when I when I first started pastoring, I was 27, 27 years old. Uh, when I came to this church, I was 32. Uh, I passed the members that had grandchildren my age. Most of the members that I pastored have children my age. But one of the expectations that I have of all of my members is that they at their age. Uh, and usually people that have a problem with me is that if you start acting childish, I don't know how to try. You know, I don't know how to, you know. Everybody at your age. But wisdom, get this, and this is the point, wisdom will help us to act our age. It will help us uh, to, to be an example for others as they are at a point in their lives where they are ready to raise the standard of living in their lives. So number one, when it comes to wisdom, you know, people don't, uh, people, number one, you don't have, people don't desire it. But then number two, uh, people uh, refuse to yield to its influence. And so, you know, as we look in the word of God, um, we learn about being a hearer of the word and then being a doer of the word. You know, many times we hear the word of God. We know what the word of God is saying, but then we don't want to do what thus saith the Lord. And so the number one, there has to be a desire. But then number two, there has to be an application. Um, you know, I... On this Father's Day, I remember, you know, growing up, my dad would tell me all the time, he was like, boy, it seems like when I tell you something, it goes in one ear and it goes straight out the other. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, but, but you know what? He was right. Sometimes when he would try to tell me stuff, it was like it went in one ear and it went out the other ear. But what uh, uh, but when it comes to uh, uh, receiving godly wisdom, you not only need to hear it, you, you need to want it, you need to hear it, but then you have to let it soak in. You have to apply it and get this, is that when it comes to the word of God, when it comes to godly wisdom, godly wisdom will offend you. And I know that is not what we teach in, you know, in the 21st century, because in the 21st century, we like to be politically correct. And don't get me wrong, uh, in certain areas of our lives, we should be politically correct. I do not believe in discriminating or, 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 or castigating or, you know, or being abusive to anybody for any reason. Even if what they do does not line up with the word of God, we do not have the right, you know, to, you know, to say different things or whatever uh, or, or be derogatory towards people. Amen. But 
But many times in, in our attempt to be politically correct, we are not being biblically correct. And the thing about it is that whenever we receive godly wisdom, uh, godly wisdom, sometimes it will offend us. It will hurt us. It will, you know, it'll make us mad sometimes. You know, somebody says, well, you know, hey, you know, you can't, you know, uh, I want you to think about the way that you responded to this situation. I'm mad. And I, I, I need to let somebody know what I think about them. And, you know, and if you get in my face, I'm going to jump back in your face. And if you curse me out, I'll curse you and your mama out. But then wisdom says, stop. Just because somebody is nasty to you does not give you the right to turn around and be nasty to them. And when, and when that hits us, it will offend us. It will offend us because, you know, our nature says, huh, you turn the other cheek. That's what the Bible says. But then... But then wisdom says you got to love the enemy. You, you know, you, 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 you have to do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Wisdom, when it hits us, it will at times offend us. But sometimes we have to be offended in order to make a change in our lives. Sometimes, you know, wisdom has to speak to us and say, hey, you need to watch your mouth. Uh, you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And I ain't talking about, you know, since before I gave my life to God. Amen. I'm talking about, you know, since I've been saved and since I've been pastoring. And, and, and sometimes the Holy Spirit has to tell me, message, you need to watch your attitude. And I'm, you know, and, and, and sometimes I don't want to hear it. I, I don't want to hear it. You know, uh, but sometimes the Holy Spirit, you, you need to watch, you, you need to, you know, you need to watch it. You know, wisdom, you know, as we as we yield to its influence, you know, sometimes wisdom would tell me, message, you need to watch, you need to watch your nonverbal, your your facial facial uh, 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 expressions because you know, and I, I know um uh you can almost tell how I feel about something without me ever saying a word because it'll be written all Amen. it'll be written all over me. You know, if I ain't feeling it, you will know. But then sometimes the Holy Spirit, through wisdom, says, hey, you need to watch this. You need to watch this. And so what wisdom, you know, and sometimes wisdom will offend us. But then sometimes it takes that being offended to say, let me look at myself. Let me look at the man in the mirror. Let me look at, you know, myself. Lord, turn the spotlight on me so that I can apply wisdom uh, to my life because wisdom says everything that I everything that I think I can do doesn't mean that I should do it. Just because I can doesn't mean that I should. Just because it's legal doesn't mean that I should do it. Wisdom says I'm elevating my standard of living. And I like that explanation of wisdom because wisdom says hey there are, there are many choices that we have in life. And in and, and this life, you know, it's not a matter of legal or illegal, you know, but there are choices that we have in life. But then the choice of God says, I am elevating my standard. I am elevating my expectation. I am elevating, you know, my, uh, my expectation that I have of myself. It's not that we're better than anybody else, but it is saying that I'm living my life. I choose to conduct myself on a higher level than everybody else. You know, just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean that I have to do it. Just because everybody else jumps off of a bridge doesn't mean that I have to jump off of a bridge. Just because everybody else is living or being mediocre does not mean that I have to be mediocre. Why settle? Wisdom says, why settle for being average when God has called you to be excellent? And, you know, and many times people will, will you know, will, will, will get me. I say, look, and we'll, we'll talk about this, I guess, uh, before this lesson ends. You know, and I tell people all the time, I said, don't ever misunderstand me. When you see me, uh, it is not the fact that I'm perfect. 
It's not the fact that I dot every I or cross every T. I, I, you don't even have to use a magnifying glass. You'll find some dots and you'll find some, uh, 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 some crosses that have not been made. But, uh, but when I say I try to live my, live my life on a higher level, it is not a statement of arrogance. Uh, it is a statement of competence. It is a statement of, I want to be the best me that I can be. I will not compare myself to somebody else. I will not compare myself to, you know, who, who came before me. I will not compare myself to anybody else. I will compare myself to me. And every day of my life, I want to be a better Gregory. I want to be a better me. And that is the benefit of, of, of not only wanting wisdom, but then applying it to our lives. Okay, let's look at verses 12 through 14. Uh, let's look at the one, verses 12 through 14, uh, also from the New International Version. And it says, I, wisdom, dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. To, the, to, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. Counsel and sound judgment are mine. I have insight. I have power. And so once again, here you have wisdom speaking. And I want you to look at the last, uh, the last clause that I read from verse number uh, uh, 14. It says, I have insight, I have power. Uh, looking at that same clause from the King James Version of the Bible, it says, I am understanding, I have strength. Wow, think about this, right? As we are talking about the counsel of wisdom, as we are talking about the counsel of wisdom, this next part uh, talks about, you know, the fear of the Lord. And so whenever we talk about, uh, whenever I look at this section, I always look at uh, the aligning of the wills, where our will is aligned to God's will. Um, I remember uh, I had not been driving maybe a year, maybe a, maybe, a, maybe a little over a year. And I found out that, you know, well, I'll tell you this story. You know, when I first started driving, uh, me and the curbs, we used to be friends. I would run curbs quick. And I would blow out tires. I would, you know, uh, uh, do all types of stuff. And, and and my dad, he would get me. He said, "Boy, if you if if you bust one more tire in this car, I'm gonna take it from you." I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I learned how to change a tire real quick because you know back then you didn't have cell phones. You know, you know, you you blew out a tire. You know, you know, you had to walk to the payphone. I don't want no cell phones. Like you, I had to learn how to, you know, change the tire real quick. But, uh, <laughs> but I said, but then um, one of the things that I found out as a result of me busting all those tires, uh, I was driving to work, and I had not realized how bad my car was out of alignment until somebody walked inside and said, "Whose car is this?" I said, "It's my car." Uh, and he said, come here. You know, I was about 17 years old. Uh, and he showed me my car. He showed me the back tires of my car. And he showed me how, and there was like a line where, where literally, you know, because the car was so bad out of alignment, you know, it had caused the tire to, to uh, the, the, the treading, you know, to, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to go away in this one particular spot. And he said, uh, your car is out of alignment. And so then, and they, see, this is wisdom, you know. And so then he said, all right, give me your key. And I gave him my key, and he, he turned on my car. He said, go straight. He said, my wheel is turned straight. He says, all right, come outside. Look at where your tires are. My tires were turned a completely different way. Whenever I think of wisdom, 
wisdom helps us to align ourselves with the will of God. Because many times we think that we're doing something right. You know, we think that just because we are living, we are breathing, we are, you know, able to make it from day to day, we're able to take care of our financial obligations, we're able to take care of our children, we are doing all, we think that we're doing right, but we could be doing all of these things right on our checklist, but yet our lives be out of alignment with the will of God for our lives. And after a while, you know, if I would have kept driving on those tires, I would have had two blowouts because my car was out of alignment. And in our lives, if we fail to heed to wisdom, if we fail to align ourselves with God's will, after a while, we're going to have a blowout in our lives. Because what's going to happen is, you know, uh, you know, you're going to think that you're doing everything right, but then you're not following the way of God. And then after a while, you know, your bubble is going to burst. Your, your bubble is going to burst. And so, yes, wisdom helps us to align ourselves uh, to the will of God. OK, get this. Wisdom is attempting to share the fact that right actions will accompany those who possess her. Those who possess godly wisdom are prepared to face the challenges of life and emerge victoriously. The ultimate goal of wisdom is to bring individuals to the point of the fear of the Lord. So we talked about this before. Whenever we talk about the fear of the Lord, it is not being afraid of God, but it is giving God the honor, respect, and reverence that is due to God. And so whenever we put God in God's place in our lives, um, then we then begin to understand, you know, godly wisdom. But whenever God is not in the right place in our lives, uh, meaning whenever our lives are out of alignment to the will of God, uh, because, you know, many times there are people and they will say this, you know, I believe in God, but, you know, I'm not, you know, Christian or I'm not, you know, whatever. Well, it's good to believe in God. You know, it's good to believe, you know. You know, but the thing about it is that even demons tremble. They know the name of Jesus and they tremble to him. You know, but then we have to give God the right place in our lives. God, uh, the late Bishop G.E. Patterson, uh, he said this in a sermon. He said, uh, you know, and he was challenging, you know, that concept of God is my co-pilot. And, um, and he says, he said, he said, I don't need God to be the co-pilot. I need him to be the pilot uh, of, of my life. And, and many times, you know, we believe in God, but we want God to be the co-pilot. We want God to get in the back seat. You know, we want God to be like, you know, that spare tire. All right, now, God, I'm going to do my thing. But if I happen to blow out a tire, well, then God, here you come. No, God says, I, you know, we have to put God in the right place in our lives. Uh, and, and God doesn't want to be just a spare tire. But God wants to be, you know, uh, uh, he wants to be the driver of our lives. Because he indeed is the author and the finisher of our faith. Okay? Um, and so then, as we look at wisdom, um, uh, wisdom says, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, and perverse uh, speech. And so let's take a look at each one of those categories. And so evil, evil is defined as anything that is contrary to God's will. Wow, that, that kind of that hits, right? That kind of stings. You know, because some people say, well, I'm not a bad person. I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a bad person. But if you're living contrary to God's will, you might not be a bad person, but you've given in to evil. Uh, because evil is anything that runs contrary to God's will. But then I want you to kind of understand these next uh, uh, concepts. Because the first undesirable characteristic of those who fear the Lord is pride. Pride, P-R-I-D-E. We must be careful about pride. Um, my best definition of pride is whenever you think, and this is what actually this is what the Bible says, uh, whenever you think 
more highly of yourself than what you ought to. Uh, one thing that I tell, uh, one thing that I tell all of the ministers that have started preaching uh, from under me is that be careful of how you believe your own press clippings. Do not get a big head because people will put you up now. You know, uh, and, and I don't care if you can be a, in ministry, you can be a life. People will put you up. Man, you 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 did that thing. Oh, you know, oh, you are a big baller and a shot call. You better be careful how you allow people to put you up. Because if people are the ones who put you up, just as soon as you don't make them happy anymore, they will put you down. But the thing about it is, is that if you let the Lord elevate you, amen, folks don't have to like you. You know, <laughs> if the Lord puts you up, another thing, where it ain't no secret, you know, if the Lord puts you up, if folks, you know, if you're doing what thus saith the Lord and if people don't understand, if they don't like you, that's not your problem. Amen. You know, you know, and like, if you don't like me because, you know, uh, that I'm trying to represent God and I'm trying to give God, you know, the best of my service, that is not my problem. That's yours. And I will not spend a second more of my time trying to figure out your problems. If you got a problem with me, that's your problem and not mine. But our job is to let God put us up. Because when God puts us up, when the people let us down, you'll still be in the right place. But pride says, pride says, I let the people put me up. I let the members put me up. I let the congregation put me up. I let my friends put me up. And if you allow people to put you up, just as soon as you do something or say something that does not make them happy, they will knock you right back down. Oh my God. That's why you got to be careful about pride. That is why you have. That is why I make that that, that stress that about pride. Because hey, you know if you know you you can be preaching, uh, Elder Sherrod, and, and one Sunday you can have three hundred people in your congregation. The next Sunday you have five. But guess what? It will not affect the level of the anointing that God has placed on your life. You know, and so be careful how you let people put you up. Because when we do that, then we're giving in to pride. All right? And so then when you look at the, 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 the concept of arrogance, um, if pride is the seed, arrogance is the fruit. So if pride is the seed, arrogance is the fruit. And so uh, pride says, I'm thinking more highly of myself than what I ought to. All right? Arrogance is, uh, as the Bible describes, is a haughty spirit. It is, you know, that, you know, I'm the man, you know. You know, I can't tell me nothing, you know. <laughs> you know, you start walking around, you know, you know, and you, you think you all of that. <laughs> you know, you, and, and then you start looking down on other that one, you know, arrogant. And, and, and let's just ask, have you ever met people that have been arrogant? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh my God. And, and you don't you don't like to be around them mm -hmm. because they just think so much of themselves. You know, it, 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 he's like, can I just get away from you for just 30 seconds? And, and one thing I tell people all the time, I say, you know, because there is a difference between arrogance and confidence. And sometimes it's a very thin line. Uh, because arrogance is a nasty spirit. But confidence says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Confidence says that I am going to be the best me that I can be. Confidence says that I will learn from my mistakes. Confidence says that you know uh, I, I will operate in a spirit of excellence. Confidence uh, uh, says that I will work to do better each time I attempt to do something. Confidence says that I will not settle uh, for substandard uh, 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 performance in my life. Confidence says that I will continuously try to better and improve myself to the glory of God. 
there's a difference between arrogance and confidence. And and and, and there was a time, actually, it was just this week. You know, uh, somebody. Oh yeah, that, that's that. Ar- I said, don't confuse my don't confuse my confidence for arrogance. Uh, just because you know I'm striving to be the best me that I can be, it's not arrogance. It's just competence. Um, all right. And so then, uh, and so then, when you think about arrogance, it leads to uh, conceit and boastfulness. Uh, so, so not only must we be careful of believing the press clippings that people make about us. But then we must be careful not to create press clippings for ourselves. You know, the wonderful, phenomenal, the fantabulous, you know, the, the whatever, you know. Uh, you be careful how you put yourself up like that. Because, <laughs> be careful how you put yourself up like that. Okay, um, let me move on because my time is actually out. Um this, I'm going to make this one last point and then I'm going to leave this lesson alone. Uh, and so whenever we look at wisdom, uh, wisdom, uh, there, are two lot, there are two paths that we can uh, walk on, right? There is the path of, there is the, the narrow way and there is the broad way. And this is what Jesus teaches, right? And so whenever we look at the broad way, that is the evil way. Think about it. The broad way is the way that says everything goes. Everything goes. And you have to be careful. You have to be careful. We have to be careful in our lives. You know, when somebody says, well, everything goes. Well, no, everything can't go. Um, you know, there has to be right. There has to be, you know, a, a wrong. It can't be, you know, a, a all, you know, it can't be a everything. And then there is the narrow way. Uh, once again, there is a way uh, that seems right to a man. But the end thereof uh, leads to uh, destruction. I am going to stop right there. Um, usually, when I teach Sunday school, uh, when I, whenever I have a class, I, I have when I, whenever I used to be a, a, a Sunday school teacher, I, I haven't taught Sunday school in twelve years. Um, but um, until now, uh, I never finished a lesson. Uh, because we would get in conversation. This is like the first time since then that uh, I have not finished a, a lesson. So uh, reread uh, our Proverbs chapter number eight uh, uh, that you might get a better understanding, and we will uh, and we will pick up our next lesson on next week uh, at uh, Sunday school at ten o'clock. Um, I'd like to say thank you for joining us. Uh, like I said, we are running behind schedule, um, and so. Uh, and I'll make sure that we put an announcement out. I need to give my people some time to, to set up. So our worship service will start somewhere around 11.15. So that's about 20 minutes from now. Uh, I, I took up their time, and so I need to give them their time back. But if you join us again at around 11.15, I, I, I promise you that the Lord will, I promise you that, that you will be blessed uh, uh, from joining us. Uh, we're not being arrogant, but we're being confident because we, we, we're here to lift up the name of Jesus. And so we hope that you will be able to join us in, like I said, about 20 minutes. Uh, with that being said, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for uh, this lesson. We thank you for what our eyes have seen, for what our ears have heard, and for most of all, God, what we have felt within our heart. We ask that you let the truths of your word sink, sink deep down in our hearts, that we might not sin against you. But Master, help us to live for you and help us to choose the path of wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, God bless you. We look forward to seeing you in about 20 minutes.